It's happening. Good evening, everyone. Everyone, welcome to the uh, public okay. meeting for the board of trustees for April 16th. Um, we'll call the meeting at 7:03 or 4, and we'll open a public hearing for the purpose of adoption of uh, new uh, sections of zoning text in our zoning resolution. Um, and since it's been approximately 17 years since we had one of these uh, uh, additions to the zoning resolution, I don't remember exactly how we did the, the structure of the meeting. So uh, I'm certainly not going to review uh, in detail the resolutions. Um, they were produced by our zoning commission over the past few months. Uh, they were submitted to Green County Regional Planning for review and recommendation, um, which happened, and then went back to the Zoning Commission uh, for their final decision on what to do with them, and they recommended that the Board of Trustees uh, do adopt them. Uh, we were delayed a little bit in as much as we had a turnover in uh, board members and the hearing didn't get on the, the agenda as quickly as required by uh, high law, so they had to go back to the Zoning Commission for another quick review, which, is, which happened at their last meeting, uh, and they did the same, made the same recommendation for adoption as they did the first time. So that's where we are. And I would, you know, initially ask you, Don, if you had any comment about uh, the, the recommendations from the Zoning Commission. Uh, actually, what I would rather do is just open up and comment on the, we view it as three separate parts, uh, and this is a, a heat public hearing, we're not voting tonight, 30 days after the vote. Uh, so I have no comment. Okay, then we'll ask for any comments from the uh, audience at large. Anyone have anything to say about these? I think there were actually three additions. So are they all related to agritourism or are there yeah. other things happening? No, there's some definitions. There's overlaps. That there were some def definitions. So every section. Yes. Yeah. They were modified also. Uh, Sure. Well, well, I just ask, is there anything in the uh, construction of language and definitions section that people have a particular comment about? Or? I, um, I went to the Zoning Commission, the last one where they really kind of finalized this. Um, and uh, myself and uh, one of my neighbors actually made some input and then they took it, so it was good. Um, we wanted to thank, well we did thank them for their work on this, this, this B and B and also the part of the ag section about B and B operations um, because they really helped define what it was and my recommendation to them was, and it generally is here, that if you're trying to eliminate confusion about what a thing means, then don't introduce new confusion. And one of the things that they had in here was to residential quarters for more than six months. And I said, well, what do you mean? Does that mean more than six months they have to live there and then they can leave? Or <laughs> is it a continuous thing? Is it a rolling 12-month period? And so I said, you just got to say what it is. Because what they really are meaning is, is that you have to be what we would consider to be a resident, mm -hmm. a permanent resident, and that's more than six months. Mm -hmm. So they they put it in here. There is a an I missing before in. It's yes. more than six months in a calendar year. Mm -hmm. But that's that was the only recommendation that you got to tell them that, what that six month is. Is it? But uh, other than that, uh, we I feel anyway, and I don't speak very much. It really wasn't me. But 
it was it was very nice to see that it was a responsible, proper, accountable change that will permit the type of bus businesses that if you want to call it a business that the B and B's are, without infringing on them, but with also you know, providing a reasonable accommodation for the people in the neighborhood surrounding them. So I think it's pretty good. I think it's really good. <coughs> And you're Mark. Yes, I'm Mark Honeywell. Yes, I am. So, um, just here by myself, I saw the thing in the paper. I asked Richard if he'd let me know if this was coming up for comments. He didn't answer me, so I thought, okay, fine. I just happened to read the paper last week. Oh, man. Well, he's decided to skip the country, so. Oh, is that right? <laughs> the law catching up with him or something? I don't know. What is which paper was it? Excuse me. It was in the Yellow Springs, Springs News. News. Which paper was it advertised? In the Yellow Springs News. Okay. Yeah. I missed it. Yeah. We, we yeah, were last. It or was before. It two was, issues ago. Yes. Uh, Let me catch up weekly people. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hard to find because there's 8,000 other announcements from the village Yellow Springs. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like probably 12 notices of this, of that, of jobs, of this. It's a busy village. I wonder, are there other concerns about the definitions? You, you might um, think about the building size in 5.2046. Um, like a lot of ag tourism might take place in barns, and the barns might be taller than 35 feet, depending on how you count it, like the cupola and so forth, you know. Mm -hmm. right. And that's not in definitions, but it's in the Section 5 recommendations. And I guess I'm wondering whether that includes existing buildings that may be used for tourism or only to new buildings that are constructed for that use. The state I think it's generally considered new building for construction in, in our zoning. Because in, in your regular agriculture section, Barns are exempted from the height mm, well, res restriction. Isn't a barn an agricultural structure? Mm -hmm. Well, then it doesn't matter because it says anything is except agricultural structures. Right, and that's why I'm asking right. for clarification because there's a potential for conflict, for contradiction there. If in fact a barn is proposed for use for an agritourism activity and it exceeds that height. Oh, I see. Restriction, then, then, five point two zero four six becomes contradictory to section five point two zero two one, which exempts barns from the height restriction in the ag district. So I just mm -hmm. just a potential contradiction there. These are all principally permitted uses? Correct. They could have been done, as I understand, they could have been structured either as a permitted use or a conditional use. Um, I don't know what the discussion was at the Zoning Commission. I know they've been working on this one for a while. <laughs> so they I don't if that could be a segue into the other sections. Yeah, could be. Um, I have a comment about uh, the, the definitions, specifically the agritourism. Uh, there are, and it's been a while, I don't know, maybe Laura brought it with her, but um, it's been quite a while since the actual state legislation you know, I, I looked at, but there was a certain set of criteria that had to be met. Uh, in order to qualify for ag tourism, uh, property had to be uh, under CAUV, as I recall. Mm -hmm. um, what the other ones were? Yeah, be, uh, have actual farm production happening mm -hmm. as well, at least 10 acres actual farm right, production. Right, the acreage, yeah. Uh -huh. Not just that you could go out and buy 10 acres and then put the rural um, kind of county fair thing, mini mm -hmm. county fair, it has to actually have production going on on the property. And the, the definition doesn't refer to meeting criteria. And I'm a little uncomfortable with that. Refer to what kind of criteria? Meeting the criteria of 
the state of agritourism. Although the, these definitions in section two, the definition of farm, the definition of agritourism, and the definition of agricultural production are word for word from, from, the, from the Ohio Revised Code. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the definition of agriculture is as defined in section 519.01 of the Ohio Revised Code, which allows for changes in that code mm -hmm. to be automatically reflected in the local in the local zoning resolution. So um, I, I, think, I think you're okay as regard definitions. Um, the challenge is is applying the, you know, what is an agriculturally related educational, entertainment, historical, culture, recreational activity. Sure. You know, and that's where the case law is being created as we speak and that sort of thing. I yeah. mean, it's in the application. It's the channel. The language is okay. I don't know that the trust that, you know, and as you know, trustees are really strictly limited by the powers given to them by the legislature. So I'm not sure you can add to their definition things. I mean, that has to be developed by case law. No, I, wasn't, I wasn't speaking of adding to the definition. I was just, uh, I just wanted the, when it was going to be, where it was going to be used met the criteria of agritourism. You know, my house in the village, I couldn't just put up an agritourism business because right. I don't meet the criteria. Right. But the criteria, other than at the certain state level, is not is not set out in our code. For example, the criteria for bed and breakfast is pretty darn specific of what has to be met. And the criteria is pretty specific in the state code of what has to be met. I don't know why we're not reflecting that that necessity. I mean there's the little part about having to have a warning sign on the premises, which is a requirement of the state. That's not reflected in the new uh, in the new zoning. In order to take advantage of the indemnity clause in the, in the state legislation. Well, you're at you're adding to section 2.2022 that what is agritourism, and then what right. is agricultural production, and then comes, that's all out of the statute. Well, it, it's only the it's only the agritourism part that, that I have a uh, question about. One, one comment on that mm -hmm. one is that it says, um, including UPIC operations or farm markets, I don't think that language is in the state code. I don't think it is either. And I think it could be problematic for the township in that those such activities are exempted by state law from regulation mm -hmm. by townships. If you have a, on a farm, right, you can sell what you raise on the farm at a roadside stand without needing any kind of permit from anybody. You don't need anybody's buy or leave as long as 50% of what you're selling on the farm stand is grown on your property, whether it's the property where, it, where it's being sold or another mm -hmm. property that you own, mm -hmm. doesn't yeah. matter. So as long as I'm just not quite sure how it got through two reviews from the Zoning Commission and review from Regional Planning with that language in there. And, um, I, I can't help you there. Yeah, I wasn't part of that. I may have to, you know, spend a little more time before well, we Well, I'll tell you where it appears. I, um, Peggy Kirk Hall from OSU Extension has it in her law bulletin about what it means. I mean, I've seen that language, and maybe there's a case on it already. Does it I say guess. the you pick? Mm hmm Yeah. It's, she's, it's exactly this language. It's right there. Well, what's Including the harm? Including you again? pick operations and farm markets. If you're telling me it's redundant. Maybe contradictory. Uh, I, you know, the safest thing is to take it out and just track the language of the statute and then yeah. let the courts sort out what what it means if somebody thinks that you all and your zoning administrator get wrong. Yeah, hey, because you define what agriculture is directly by the state code. And if this is identical or interpreted to be what is legal according to the state, then that would be the easiest way out. Just say agritourism is defined in the higher state code, whatever. 
And that way, if there's a judgment in, you know, okay. Warren County, all of a sudden they find out, oh, we can't do that. Well, you don't have to rewrite your code because it's defined, and then the courts in Warren decide that you can't do that, <coughs> so it ends up applying here. Yeah. Senate Bill 75 defined agriculture, um, and it did not have language about it. it. says it's an agriculturally related educational, entertainment, historical, cultural, or recreational activity. And it also says including you pick farm markets. That's, I, that may be Peggy's language. That's not, that's not the OIC. And I, I just think that's dangerous because farmers everywhere in Ohio are accustomed to putting farm stands up and not getting permits for them. And if you're now saying you're going to regulate something that has previously been exempt from regulations, I bet you're going to get some blowback <laughs> from, from out in the township. All right, so we'll have to think about that a little. Any further discussion about the definitions and um, in these two sheets? Since we're on the topic, I just want to recommend Ed Amrine's most excellent application form he did for Beaver Creek mm -hmm. ship on this topic. If you yeah, do for get for those who don't know, I'm the zoning and planning <laughs> administrator for Beaver Creek Township, and I've been through this process on the township side of the ledger, and I'm here tonight by virtue of my interest in supporting the activities of Agraria, the community solutions of farm property on um, West Dayton Yellow Springs Road. And so, frankly, it's kind of interesting to be on both sides of this discussion at the same time. <laughs> New Creek Township, is it conditional or, or permitted? Permitted. Is it? And, and that was, that's the first decision that all townships have to make. Is it going to be permitted or conditional? I think there's only one or two in the, in the county that are doing it as a condition. I think most of them are permitted. And, and that's a good tool for townships that don't have a zoning staff mm -hmm. and um, simply want all such decisions to go straight to their citizen planners in the form of the Board of Zoning Appeals. Mm -hmm. um, in our case, we have a, a, a not just an excellent BZA, but we have a, we have a three-person zoning staff, and um, so the decision in Beaver Creek Township was to bring first application, first attention to these to the to the zoning staff that then make some initial judgments on things like is it ag-related, mm -hmm. does it comply with the provisions of our code as we've seen fit to implement what the state allows us to. Mm -hmm. So, and we did not choose to have that language in there. The, the language in Ohio Revised Code 901.8, for example, agritourism is an agriculturally related educational, entertainment, historical, cultural, or recreational activity conducted on a farm that allows or invites members of the general public to observe, participate in, or enjoy that activity. It doesn't say anything about farm stands or anything like that. So I, I'm, I'm on that ohiocodes.gov website right now, and it, it says you pick. It's in the statute. Nine point, not the same one that you read, 901.80. A two, and it's ver I just checked it's verbatim what's here. Hmm. So the definition of agriculture. The definition of agriculture is, is, is verbatim That's what this not, is. Then I'm. Um, well, I'm just saying, and it may be that they that they've either amended it um, since they first did it or whatever. But that's what's on Ohio.gov right now. It's verbatim what's here. Maybe now some, for some clarification. Well, you may have a point, but it would be useful to just cite, the, cite where that comes from, so that if they change it, you know, you guys don't have to jump through hoops, either, either just, either just refer to that. Thanks for pointing that out. I mean, 
we did this legislation a year ago, who knows what happened since then. It's um, codes.ohio.gov slash ORC slash nine point. I find this uh, really helpful, <laughs> but we were assuming that the hearing would go about half an hour. Yeah. So <laughs> why don't we shift gears? I have one quick thing that I forgot that I need to mention. Uh, I guess it, it's, I guess it's not in the language, but in the uh, replacement of Section 5, the Agricultural District, um, where I think it's, yeah, where it talks about the bed and breakfast. And uh, Mark, maybe you remember this because I probably won't. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't the certificate of occupancy question? Didn't it get a little muddy in as much as yes. the, the county did not issue certificates of occupancy to uh, anything other than new buildings? No, they, they would issue a certificate of occupancy for any construction. So if you do a modification, uh, re, uh, you know, a renovation, or whatever, they will come and do a, a closeout inspection and say, yep, you can live in that, you can you use that space, or whatever. But if you just hang the shingle out front that says bed and breakfast, well, I don't think they're going to give you a certificate of occupancy. If you don't have one, like I went and bought a house one time, and I went down to well, here, I was in Connecticut, and I went down to the county and I said, hey, I need to get the certificate of occupancy. And they said, there isn't one. And I said, well, this house was built like eight years ago. What do you mean there's no seal? And they said, well, the guy never finished it. We never did a closeout inspection. So, you know, it's just been out there. And, uh, <laughs> and so I'm like, whoa. And so once that happened, I can't buy it because you can't get a loan without a CO. Or just insurance. Insurance, the whole, everything. Everything triple, you know, trickles down. And my lawyer said, yeah, you got cash, you can buy the house. You can't buy it without a CO. You got, you know, they got to produce one. So we made an offer saying, you got to give us a CO on it. They wouldn't do it, so they sold, somebody sold to a bank. But, I mean, the thing is, is that we're here, you're asking for the CO. What I think the original interpretation was that you actually had to go get a bed and breakfast CO. And that really wasn't possible. What they're really saying is you have to get a residential mm -hmm. certificate of occupancy. So if you're, for example, renting a bedroom in a house that was built illegally, the building department ought to know about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they ought to say, hey, right. Right, wait a minute, yeah. you got a, you got a structure over here that wasn't, well, we never we have a building plan on this. We can't. So that's the kind of thing I think it was intended to do. The problem is it's a county function. The, the, the CO, not a township function, mm -hmm. and you know you can't. How do you how do you get the township enforcing their thing? And it's well, it, townships are prohibited from operating building departments. They can't. Right. They so, can't. So, so you really can't. So case. it's just I. What does it say? I I, I think that it, that was pretty much left alone. Um, and there from, uh, oh, this one. 53057 shall obtain and provide to the county zone inspector. I know it's in the original. It's just I thought I thought we had to, you know, we came in a, a, to an impasse on that because of the uh, because of the county building department. Well, I, issue them. I, I think they will. I, I really do think they will, especially especially if the house is old. They'll just come out and say, Yeah, we've inspected it, and you can live there. You've been living there for 20 years. Keep on, keep it on. They're not going to say no. They might come out and say, well, wait a minute. This electricity is 50 years old, and we can't have you renting rooms here because it's just not safe. Fire. And it, I don't think it asks for fire inspection. I think no. So there's none of that. Um, but um, I think that that's kind of a building is going to cover fire stuff when they look at that stuff anyway. Mm -hmm. But I. I think the idea ultimately is that they will provide it. I mean, I think we asked them one time, will they provide this? Yeah, they will. Because in, in the particular case that kind of gave rise to this, they, they went in and inspected and they found out that there was some construction that was off schedule. And they said, you can't do this. And they said, okay, so what are we going to do? So they, they got a building permit and they made the changes. So that it's living space, but it's not residential living space. So, 
Okay, I'll it, go by your memory in that. Well, the bottom line is, is that if you look at this, after you get that CO, then 30510 requires that CO and the, var the variance, or whatever it's called, the, the uh, conditional use permit, to be posted. Yeah. Okay. And that way, well, I mean, so that anybody can see it. So you said, what, what is it that we're permitted to do here? You know, so, so guests can, can look at it and say, oh, I see it. This is a licensed establishment, if you will. And, and that's the idea. So somebody over the building, they'll, they'll produce it. It's not going to, they'll just say, oh, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't, because I know that when I just, I just did a, a, a debt revision and that I couldn't use it, live it, whatever, until county building came and did their final inspection. Mm -hmm. And when they did, they gave me a closeout building permit. Mm -hmm. And I personally think that a closeout of a building permit <laughs> is over. So all you got to do is put an electrical outlet in <laughs> and say, hey, I need to come out here and get an electrical inspection. Now ah, here's my CEO. I mean, it's just something to say that somebody's been out here to look at this thing. Because I know that if they came out there to look at the electrical outlet and they found that it's built on quicksand, they say, whoa, wait a minute, <laughs> we can't approve that. That's not right. There's something else going on here that we have to fix. That's just a gift. I, I, don't, know. I, I don't recall that being an issue um, with respect to they would not. I, I, it is an issue of enforcement, asking the township to enforce the building code. That was a problem. And so this gets the... <coughs> township out of that. This just says, you got to get it. Bring it to the BZA and then post it in your place of business. Mm -hmm. If somebody's got to complain about it, they can go to the count. Not about the CO. Okay, so let's move from the definitions then to Sorry. the adoption of Section 5, which is the revised uh, agricultural district. Um, there were some changes in the initial purpose uh, of it. I'm not really sure why they decided to streamline that. Uh, I thought it was fairly well written to begin with and, and, and was stronger in our commitment to agriculture than what's written here, but if that's what they decided, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna push to go back to the other one. Um, I think the only other uh, new additions were the agritourism addition and the the change bed and breakfast and the, the rest of them. They, they removed a couple of the uh, old permitted uses, the canneries and distilleries and things that were that were obsolete and uh, they gave their, their recommendations. Don, did you have anything? Nope. Anything from the floor on revised section five? Well, that makes it pretty easy because the last one is just simply the revised, or not the revised, but the new agritourism section that then is goes into every other section of the code. Um, it's, it's virtually verbatim in all of them. The only question I had was right at the very beginning, it says all operations here to under must meet the definition of agricultural agritourism in section 2.204 which I assume is the definition section, or using the definition section, but 2.204 in the definition section is for airports. Maybe they added the last two, four, two, 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 two. No, yeah. it, it's actually, uh, here it's 2.221A. If they're talking about definition of agritourism, whoops, wait, I'm sorry. There it is, 2.222, right? Right, but I mean on the, on the top of of these, I mean, that'll, that'll need to be changed. With the cross-reference. Yeah. Yeah. And other than that, as I say, I think it's just a, a cut and paste to each one of the sections. So, any further comments about that or any of the other sections that we've reviewed? Now that we're 29.2 minutes into the... We don't have to stick to our five. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hearing none, I entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. <laughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote on that, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. 
Okay, well, thank you thank all you for coming. Much. You're certainly more than welcome to stay for the exciting more exciting part, part exciting. of the meeting. Very exciting part of the meeting. So I'll pause point, the camera so you guys can... At this point, you shall continue the meeting. It really takes me longer. Uh, now I entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of April 2nd. I so move. Uh, the view was pointed out a couple of typos. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Take care. Thanks for coming. A couple of typos? Um, yeah, we've got a mic. So as amended. Mm -hmm. So maybe we vote. Uh, is there a motion? I move that we start to move the house. minutes with the typographical changes. All right. Uh, I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, maybe vote, please. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Okay, I'm going to entertain a motion to approve payment of the bills in the amount of $94,638.02. This is a big operation tonight. Broken down general fund 53628.15. Fire fund 27, um, 445.70. When has that ever happened? You're, you're on there. $7,230.86. EMS yeah. billing $6,046.09. Nine cents, Road and Bridge 610541, and Capital Projects 11881. Mm -hmm. uh, I move uh, approval of payment of bills. Okay, Mr. Hollister moves. I'll second. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. None. May we vote, please? Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Okay, uh, corresponding to the period, we had Premier Health Employee Care News, we had a, a Township Association Risk Management um, for the legal defense and claims payments along the government property agreement, and it's just a brief uh, summary of what we uh, agreed upon. We had a letter from uh, Prosecutor Stephen K. Haller, uh, and he, he writes, as your statutory legal counsel, I'm committed to providing reliable and efficient legal services to all my civil clients. To that end, I'm pleased to announce that I've assigned Assistant Prosecuting Attorney Alice K. DeWine to work with Elizabeth A. Ellis, Civil Division Chief, in providing exceptional legal services to our clients. Alice has served this office well for nearly 10 years. Criminal, criminal Division developed excellent litigation skills and will be a great asset to the Civil Division. Uh, she's been assigned as our legal counsel. Please contact her legal assistant. I don't know, Stephanie had a legal assistant. This is a new twofer. Anyway, that's from Prosecutor Hallard. I spoke to her today. Mm -hmm. You did? Yeah. Call me back after that hour. There you go. Um, take grassroots clippings from the OTA, uh, Green Council Council on Aging in Insights newsletter. Um, a direct energy solicitation to uh, the natural gas, uh, a super official booklet from Dinsmore about our bond council uh, uh, work in obtaining the $5.75 million bond for the, uh, not actually a bond, but the, technically they call it a bond, but the loan from the USDA that has everything in it. Did you get find the? I didn't get well, I'm sorry. Okay, they're in there. <laughs> I know. I just, yeah, okay, I'm busy. I, I thought you needed them. Anyway. I, I just need them for our records. But virtually every piece behind. of paper that we submitted to USDA and everybody else is in that pamphlet and a DVD of it, no less. So we really, I must say, we got our money's worth out of Dinsmore. Not so much maybe Barkley and whoever. But, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, uh, I sent us a flyer about the funding workshop that we talked about at the um, Township Association meeting, a message from uh, Inspector Zoff about being out of town for three weeks, uh, our legislative um, uh, alert for the week, um, and meet, meeting minutes from, from the 13th. From, Wait, sorry. From 14. Of our phone call. Okay. March. Yeah. Any other correspondence uh, in or out? Sure. Hearing none, we'll move to the fire department report. <coughs> Chief Allman. Thank you. Uh, While you guys are doing the bills, I you know, thought of a fun fact. 
What is that? The uh, reimbursement for the volunteers. Um, the new it, low? It is an all-time low for the first quarter of the year since that's the longest one. By like $3,000. So. <laughs> um, but since the last meeting, there have been 37 EMS calls, 13 fire calls, and we conducted six fire safety inspections. Uh, the fire calls included response to the tornado that hit uh, along Clifton Road and South River Road um, for Tuesday right after the trustees meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, people were very lucky. No one was, no one was injured. Some livestock was lost. But, um, EMA was out the following day with uh, guys from the National Weather Service and the only thing was assessed them. Well, we did, you know, the township sustained, especially certain properties, sustained some significant damage. Uh, the overall damage in the county was below the threshold for the disaster declaration. Um, excuse me. Uh, to come to our woes, uh, we've got uh, two members resigning from the department. Um, firefighter Aaron King, volunteer firefighter. Uh, after 1.8 years of service, he's uh, moved to Vandalia. Yeah, he's a good kid, but um, and then uh, the bigger news: uh, Captain Amy Check was resigning after years. after 16 and a half years of service with us. Uh, she's accepted a position in Indiana with Indiana University's Air Ambulance Service, so she'll be moving to. Uh, I said Air Ambulance. Yes. Yep. Spectacular. Like, so. yeah, like, yeah, our, like, carefully yeah, like, yeah. for Indiana. <laughs> so she'll be moving to Muncie, Indiana. Um, and mm. working. we'll be working there. So we'll certainly miss her service and we'll, we'll schedule a, a formal day for her. And what about her schedule? Um, we have to figure that out. <laughs> okay. You're still going to, speaking of schedule, you're still transitioning to 2448. Yes, I'm following that. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I made a call today. I didn't have a chance to type my report up for you guys. Um, just a couple other things. Dispatcher, uh, National Public Safety Telecommunicator Week was next was last week. So uh, Wednesday of last week was our day we adopted our dispatcher, so we brought them tasty treats, uh, which they seem to approve of. Um, Secretary Purdue was here last week or two weeks ago. Mr. Hollister and Mr. Crockett were here. A good time was had by all. He certainly is very um, Colonel Sanders esque. Very <laughs> country pleasant, charming country guy. So. He had a great face when he pulled up in his big RV on the ramp, walked out, and thought that this was the new building. Mm -hmm. job. I think that's fine. great. <laughs> uh, so, luckily, it's not. Um, We've got our recruiting open house. Maybe you've received these in the mail. Mm -hmm. um, so, our nice. recruiting house is on the 26th. Uh, those are courtesy of, not courtesy, but Clay and Stan here in town designed the whole campaign for us, which, uh, who? Clay and Stan. Um, which I, actually, I thought they built to. It was reasonable for all the stuff they went towards. Wasn't bad. Yeah, I was yeah. impressed. Um, so those went out last week. Uh, DMS did the mailing for us um, and printed out more cards so we had enough to hit the 2,700 addresses that we needed to hit in both villages and the township. Um, so we're hoping to get some people. We've already got uh, three applications in, so we're hoping that these people pan out. And, uh, it works. and we're hoping also get all three that we have are not from potential at all. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that this will get us some people from the local community. There was some comment on Facebook about, or somewhere about surge of inquiries. Yeah, a way of counting. Not applications, but just buzz. We did have a surge of inqu ink yeah. inquiries. Um, one of our members um, accidentally launched uh, on the Facebook business page like we have, you can create a job offer and then have people apply for it. One of the, and so he accidentally launched it. It was during the last stress season. And I'm sitting here, my phone keeps binging as we're getting people applying for a job. Like, What's going on? Um, the next day, Nate and I kind of jazzed it up a little bit, boosted it. There's a bill on the credit card for a Facebook boost, uh, which you know, 12,000 people in the 20 mile radius, and then suddenly we received 28 interest applica applications. 
But one of the things why most places don't advertise for a job like that on Facebook is anyone can apply. <laughs> so they're supposed to provide you know the work history. Half of those had nothing. Mm -hmm. Some I think were fake profiles. I mean, they're probably trolled by the Russians. I don't know, but we'll see. We these are volunteers or for for volunteers. Uh -huh. So everybody who uh, sent something in got a reply with an application and saying come to our volunteer open house. And, Actually shows up. Um, hopefully something because so we need help. <laughs> that twenty eight was from the boosted. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so we'll see how that goes, and we'll have snacks. So that should do it. Uh, tornado stuffing. Oh, staffing. Um, <laughs> we'll be having stuffing. Um, so for the. <laughs> Staffing, we're looking at implementing it on May 14th solely because two of the three people will not be available for it. And Joe's got previously approved vacation plans that will be at his uh, maybe Sunday sister in law's wedding in Florida for a week and a half. Can they ask to cancel that? Um, and Jason graduates from nursing school the week before that, so I figured that way. Schedules are all clear, we're good to go. Um, at the next meeting, I'll have a resolution for y'all. For y'all in pass, which approves a 212 hour work period for the three of them versus the 40 hour work periods that we're on right now, which is the FLSA's way of containing the overtime for us. Mm -hmm. So, since we don't have that currently, we have to have that resolution so that it's not just some weird thing, we suddenly pick them wrong. Um, and then, from what I hear from talking to a fiscal officer who the OFCA referred me to, the UAN, and I'll get the info for you has, it's in it to set up a 24-hour pay, oh. a 212-hour pay period. So it shouldn't be much for Margaret to do other than entering numbers, which is nice. <laughs> Trying to make this as easy as I can for Margaret. So um, the only other downside we're having is, you know, we with these guys in there's six part-time slots, we'd be working one shift every six days during the daytime. Uh, we filled three of those with our guys who are currently part time. Uh, Brett, Evan, and Ted. And the other part timers can't come into that rotation. Uh, we've got one guy from outside who looks at a good candidate for that. Uh, but we're still short two, so we're going to advertise that and see, if we get some and see if maybe Ted or Evan want to pick up two shifts in a six day period. So. Um, but other than that, we should be good to go. Oh, and then um, just as an FYI, we're looking at contracting with a company called FireCompanies.com for a website redesign. We looked at a website recently. It's a little woeful, um, and we don't have any way to put things on, you know, like like you guys do with yours. Uh, FireCompanies.com is a firefighter-owned company that specializes oddly in fire department websites. <laughs> So uh, we looked at originally doing going the traditional route of getting graphic computer and graphic people. And those you know, you're looking at eight to fifteen thousand dollars to mm -hmm. design it. These guys, it's nine hundred eleven dollars. Don't know if that's per month. Oh no, I <laughs> yeah, checked that one. Now that'll <laughs> for uh, a year. Because they, I mean, they host it. <laughs> Works out well. Yeah. They host it. There's a whole bunch of features you get. But the most important thing for us, one, is it'll look modern. But we can have downloads on it. We can. It'll link to our social media stuff, so Facebook posts will appear there, mm -hmm. Instagram posts, that kind of stuff. All the stuff the kids today like. Um, and it will be a modern website. This is what we have. It'll be you know, optimized for mobile browsing and all that kind of stuff. Because right now it's kind of hard to just tell people, this is our website for more information. Mm -hmm. There's no information. I mean, Bob's done yeoman work trying to keep it, keep it up, because I think we launched that in the late 90s. Yeah, it's been basically unchanged since. So it's Adrian Davidson's wife who did that for us. So for eighteen hundred dollars. So we'll get this for cheaper. So I gotta have Denny and Jeremy look at their spec stuff and see. But and it we hosted it not here, so we don't have to worry about it and all that kind of fun stuff. I think Tony Arnett charged us twenty five hundred for ours. I can't remember. You don't remember that? So anyway, just that one. So uh, and that. Okay. Anything for the chief? Mm -hmm. And you got anything for 
or a new player has to report to you? I got nothing. Mm. Uh, like where we got the building permits, or the foundation permits ready to go. So. Yeah. Uh, Green County Building Department has uh, issued fund foundation permits, so we can get started with that once we get the USDA and MSA on the same page for for their little snafu. And I haven't heard back from Dan. I asked him where they were with that, but he hasn't responded. Um, so we're not putting out the bids yet. Uh, I have a phone call tomorrow morning with uh, our Kleinlinger representative uh, in order to form a required permit for the building for the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency. There's some regulation that if you build something on more than one acre of land in the state of Ohio, you have to spend $200 and get it permitted by the Ohio EPA. So lucky us with our 2.0003. So that's in the works. Other than that, not so much. The lot next to us from Friends Care is going to match our, their landscape is going to match ours. So. Yeah, it's going to be nice. We can take it over. <laughs> Fill our annex there. Uh, that should be stricken from the official record as a joke. <laughs> I think we already learned what to strike <laughs> over the years. True. Fact from fiction, I've got that. Cemetery <laughs> Sexton. Oh, let's see. Not much activity in the cemetery. We're going to work on a cannon tomorrow. We're bringing in a wrecker. Set back it, down. How's the ground? It'll be all right. He can. won't have to get off. Of the wrecker won't have to get off. Of it. No. But they won't want me to be there with the thing. So I can lift the sides. Trim some branches out of that tree before. Did you talk to Timmy Eaton about that? I talked to Bob Hatcher about it. Okay. And he wanted to know if Tim called me, and I said, no, I haven't spoken to him. But Bob he called Margaret, so that's. I saw the move. Okay. I already talked to Bob about it. Bob told me about it. Okay. He told me what, what they wanted to do, what mm -hmm. was going on, so I took care of it. Okay. So I'll be down there tomorrow morning with him. All right. For a short time, I hope. Long. Yeah. I'm going to be there. And I have to meet some lady there at 1 o'clock tomorrow. Purchase a grave. Somewhere that other note that I left you? Yes. Okay. Wolf. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. We've got three or four ashes pinned. We've got one coming Saturday. Another one soon. Mm -hmm. In Sears in Section O. And there's a couple more that are going to call back, and I've got one clipped in sometime. Mm -hmm. He has a call back either of the time. And did you pick a site in Lakeview for the? I'm going to. Okay. Not yet. It's not until the 26th or something, right? Right. Okay. Right. So I thought I'd pick something, and she wanted to go ahead and pay, and I, you know, I thought I'd meet with her when she gets here. No, just pick something. Mm -hmm. It's already been deposited. Right. Well, I'll just, I'll She's paid for that and the uh, internment. Mm -hmm. Said she was going to. Mm -hmm. She She's did. It'll be on Saturday. She paid for something. I'll pick him in my spot. Yeah. And maybe we'll start mowing next week if we're not blowing some You're going to mow over those newly seeded graves that are growing grass? No, we'll mow around them. Mow we'll around them? Okay, that's good. I mean, yeah. soon add. I don't like those cut Did you pay attention to the weather? <laughs> yes, I have. That kind of holds me up a little bit at times. Yeah, I know. So, but no, I'll take care of that too. I can do it, I'll do it. We could add weather as an item. Yeah, we could. <laughs> well, you, can do some, you can do something with the weather. I'll oh, appreciate it. <laughs> Anything further from the cemetery section? Donald? Nope. Okay. Uh, Pop hole man? Oh, they're, they're almost finished. No way. Yeah, yeah. I hit them hard today. All those ones on high road? Mm -hmm. All those ones on Larkins? Larkins, no. No. Tobias, uh, South River, North River, Snip. Some on uh, Houston. But we've got a yeah. spot. Did you see that one spot? Yeah. It's shallow. I don't think it will stay. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. So I 
split past it today. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back to it. I did hit someone down the way, but I don't know what's up with them. They're real shallow, and I don't know if I'm going to have to kind of knock them around and make it a little deeper or what. So that's one of the roads and marking. Snip. Snip to care of that small. All right. On top of it. And Branham. Branham's done. Well, we're rolling, we're rolling. <laughs> but you didn't take the roller, did you? No, you just drove. That, that's but, the you know, you yeah, I get the idea. <laughs> that culvert on Carroll Drive that's mm -hmm. been in question, mm -hmm. it's actually collapsed. Well, Somebody know. dug out there. I know, but the question is, did we collapse it? No. No. Okay. No. But I saw. I stopped there today because I saw the water. I tried to find the end. I seen somebody had dug up the end. But it's, it's not great. So obviously, the pipe is collapsed. It's a metal pipe. It's probably. Yeah. But we didn't do it. Okay. We so don't turn around there. I know. And, I know. you know, he had a tractor that pulled you, a semi tractor that pulled his trailer with. That's probably what done it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so did you tell him that? I didn't talk to him. Okay. Out there. Then I see Mark's out here because Mark is going to go between or whatever. If I see him, I would talk to him. We don't, we don't just rail. All right. Well, we'll, when Mark comes But it definitely it, it needs to be replaced. Mm -hmm. And I think that's on them, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, speaking of drainage, um, you, did you see the little uh, additional millionth note from the Glen Drive residents about? Yes, I spoke with her this morning. Did you? I met with her husband. Going to have to clean that out. What's happening is that whole area is encroaching in their yard because of the moisture comes down off the hill and the springs. So it's like what used to be this wide by their shed is now like that wide. There's not that much water there. I was there yesterday. It was raining like buckets, and there was hardly any. It drains. Yeah. But it's, I think the real question is, it's moving towards their shed, and the land's like becoming part of that. That area's getting bigger. So I said I could scrape that out and dress it up and maybe haul it in some dirt and put between their building and the edge of the, it's, it's, it's out of our easement, though. But that was mm -hmm. one of the op options. It's getting closer to the, I need to look down the ground right by the building with water and holes. So it's obviously spring water coming down. You know, there's springs all over. Yeah. There. Yeah. So I said I could possibly give them some dirt put down there to widen that area, kind of move it away from their building a little bit. But it's the water, it's not any worse than it's been in 20 years. It's always up there. Mm -hmm. And our pile does drain. So I could take some vegetation and maybe <coughs> push some of that water to drain a little faster. I don't know. I spoke with them. They said to be gone for three weeks. Let's see what I can do to do something about it. Okay. So, I mean, what do you? I don't know. Because <laughs> it is growing. That area is it is growing into their yard, but I mean, it's just a natural from all the water that lays down in the bottom layer. Well, if you think you pull a little dirt up. That's why I think. Of. Take a couple loads, push it along your building, and mm -hmm. make it wider so you can get his motor past there like you used to be able to. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if I you drag that a little bit, clean it up, it might make it drain a little better. Did it's pretty bad. Did yeah. you say that it's, it's, but it's beyond the easement of the township's responsibility? Their shed, yeah. It's probably the inside, it's probably out of our easement, you know, right away. So, I don't know. So, you think they really Basically. And I inspected your Tobias Road drain. Drain uh, beautiful. I looked at it yesterday. It was running good on it. I just dress up to the so. Still comes about on the road pretty well. well it runs down the road. Yeah. Not as bad as it was. Well, I thought the idea was to keep it off the road. Well, it's to you know, see how much used to run across the yeah. road. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, I got know, you, but I left, some, I left a ridge of dirt there to force it through the, and it's running. He's going to do some more driveway work, which he needs to do to, add some, to kind of bring it up and keep it over in the grass. But we eliminated 90% of the problem. Yeah. And the well, pipe was running full yesterday. I mean, really, it was moving a lot of water. I went down and looked. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't near the water on the road that we were dealing with. So it's not done now. A little more. I should eliminate pretty much all of it. Okay. We're well, going to get water run down the road because it, 
I mean, yes, it's a big improvement, but you know, you just you soon as I see a nice fast running stream of water heading down the headed down the road, you go, Oh, it'd be nice if that one there. Well, <laughs> Anything else for the road? Well, I'm going to be gone June 1st through 5th. I want to let you know that. Must be nice. Graduation. Take every Friday off. And take He's every graduating. June 5th. Yeah, graduation. Yeah, first of the Friday, and I'll be back to work on Wednesday the 6th. Right, just as long as all your grass is cut, your yeah, arms yeah. are trimmed, your, 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 your graves are pretty, yeah. your uh, graves are very long before that. <laughs> your trucks are clean, uh, waxed. Armor all. Yeah. It's I got it, I got it, I got it. Let's go on. <laughs> okay. This cops a report. Um, there's a resolution. For you? For you, for everybody. It's okay. resolution 2018-17. It's an amendment of permanent and supplemental appropriations. And whereas it's an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to these township, now therefore the trustees authorize an amendment to the following permanent appropriation, which is was um, increasing 1,190-599, which is an other line item, and increase that by $50,206.56, and that is the payoff of the loan that we borrowed last year. And um, something I haven't done in a long time, which was a supplemental appropriation. And I um, decreased, I had, I had um, a lot of money sitting in this one line item of 490, 4901999990 other financing uses, which is the capital fund. Um, and so I took the uh, $150,743.16 out of that and moved it to transfers out so that we could transfer that money, that same amount, to the general fund, that is money that we spent from the general fund last year on new firehouse expenditures and um, reimburse the general fund. Mm -hmm. So that's that's good news. Yeah, that is good news. Yeah. So the Miami Township Trustees authorize the fiscal officer to do so immediately. I entertain a motion to adopt resolution 2018. What is it? 17. 17. Mm -hmm. I so move. Mr. Hollister moves. I'll second. Any further discussion regarding that resolution? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. All right, well, thanks for... Yeah, so those two um, those two transactions are the big news of the day. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, we, and I, I uh, started the automatic deposit of payroll today. So fingers crossed, everybody will have, those <laughs> folks will have their monies by Wednesday. <clears throat> there are four very old checks. I will take care of them from March um, 4th. Or that's all my big news. Okay. Okay. Anything for this platform? No? Nope. Chris? No. Bob Cooper's not here, so we won't have him. Uh, now, zoning, uh, state committee reports, uh, in the RPC, executive committee and board, board of directors were, were uh, uh, canceled for, for April. We will meet in May. Uh, Don and I attended the spring dinner. Uh, it was very nice. Uh, also, it was well attended. I had a good time. How about you? It was great. Can't beat that. Great is good. Uh, Regional Planning and Coordinating Commission. I got to talk to you about that. Um, we're meeting tomorrow. The Executive Committee is ready to meet tomorrow. We're going to meet next week. Senior System. Uh, Mark's Clifton Union Cemetery. We had a meeting. There you go. Woo! <laughs> they were pleased to hear that uh, the, the Miami Township branch of Ancestry.com is now in full operation. And uh, there was some chatter about how to promote that. Is there any chatter about how to pay for it? You, you didn't include me in. Not very good, Chris. <laughs> uh, the, they suggested that... Uh, we were looking for a little nut on that one. I, you did it's not, not too late. No, it's not. Um, sometime. I mean, this is ongoing. It's just yeah. sometime. 
Uh, yeah, David, like David Farrell, 30%, something like that. Uh, they said, that's, that's Green Township? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, they said he would have special interest in the history side of things. Is that right? And that uh, he might help promote the news. Um, no, we don't like, no, policies no, or procedures or bylaw no, changes? Really or, no, no, no surprises, nothing. Well, so that's it. Okay, very good. Um, uh, ESC, Mark's not here. Uh, mill, I'm here. Oh, yeah, the mill. Mm -hmm. well, Two I'm questions. Sure. You did? You did? Yeah, I'll go for it. Oh, okay. Do um, you think you could, uh, next time you have a date with Mike Gray, your daily date or whatever it is, hourly date, if he, it's, it's a small tip. If he throw <laughs> three or four of his fancy trucks of gravel onto the parking lot and the, the, the little parking spot there by the front door In at the mill. Okay. Uh, they used to go up to the the spot that goes up to the building itself. Yeah. And he wants a little gravel in it. Yeah, it's sunk over time and it's holding water for quite a while. And, you know, I think it would be nice as the, the building owners to sure. we'll do that. To get some sure. gravel on that form. Sure. Okay, thank you. What was your question? Your uh, sign, the topper, the nice, really nice looking topper pieces I made one time, you can notice one of them was like deteriorated. Where? On, on your sign. No, I did not notice. I would like to replace those. Go for something it. else. Don't, don't put the lit ones out there, though. No. Well, put something up there. I made those. You know, the ones that are up there, I made those. Yeah. So if you like something the same. But I know it's one of them is kind of falling apart. No, that'd be good. No, we need to protect those posts. You want something shiny up there? Nope. Just I just don't want, yeah, I just don't want it to be lit like the sign on the new firehouse signs. That was really a nice addition. <laughs> well, they had some nice ones, and others that have that like, copper top that aren't really. Yeah. Copper top that aren't really. What do you feel fast? Well, I think it would look nice. Okay. Okay. Go for it. Okay. You want to weigh in on that then? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm all for no light at night. Uh, any new business this evening? Uh, I don't know if this is called new business, but uh, there's been news about the Tecumseh Land Trust uh, partnering with, in fact, we may be a former partner, uh, with about two dozen organizations, um, and they've gotten a major grant, a couple million dollars, for work primarily in the Jacoby Creek mm -hmm. towards further conservation. <coughs> called Krista McGraw and said, you know, I'd really like to learn more about that. And she said, well, rather than my meeting with you alone, how about if you invite me to present to the Board of Trustees? So I would like to put on our next agenda. She's penciled in uh, our first meeting in May, would be May 7th. Would be May 7th. I think she's penciled that in. Can we add her to our agenda? Give her an ink pen and say, "Okay, right again. that's that's my business." She's always more than welcome here. Okay, yeah, that would be new business. I like that new business. Uh, any old business? I just wanted to mention that a couple weeks ago I went to GIS training put put on by the auditor's office on the new uh, new GIS part of their website. Uh, it was very informative. Uh, I also went to the to the Luca Luca training, uh, which is is that L U C A L U C A. It's a local something census something. Oh. It's where we, we get involved with the twenty twenty census, but it starts early, and you have to you have to review county maps and urban lists maybe? of local urban. Mm -hmm. What else you start with you? Rural. You. <laughs> so what is it? It does? Go through. Uh, go through uh, <laughs> updates, any updates that we may have for 
about updates? Well, the census updates. takers. Census. Okay. Uh, we're we're going to get a list of all the addresses and we'll get a list of new new addresses and we'll compare them to what we have and if we know of any new places or, or any places that uh, um, aren't on there, I mean, even old stuff that's not on there, then we can add because we'll update of census addresses. We'll update of census addresses. Yeah. Because of course the census determines many, many things in local government. Apparently, this is not how they order to live here in the country. Is there a foreign part? Part of the question. Yeah, citizen. <laughs> Any further business before the board this evening? Hearing none, I would uh, entertain a motion to uh, adjourn by acclamation. I uh, so move. We're adjourned. Thank you. Here's a swank. Wait.